might do better to hold this on your shoulder to be quite honest. I think it needs to be higher up. No. Well, someone's going to be sitting here and it'll be right in the way. Do you know what, James? I think you'd do better and much more comfortable just holding it on your shoulder. It's too much. I've done it before. Each time. Why? I don't know. I mean, you, you can decide what you want. So, yeah, here it is right here. No. Oh, I thought you said something. I thought you were saying you wanted to read the writing, mister. Uh, I said nothing, madam. I'm hanging this right now. Because if you want, I can let you read the writing now, mister. I cannot read your master's manuscript now, madam. I'm hanging this right now. Madam, you have done it that time. There has been a death in the firm. Our employer, Mr. Grubov, has passed away. Oh, has he? Yes. That's a sorrow. Yes. And a sorrow it was when my master died. Him being so sadly reduced in fortune. He didn't let the coffin, what you can call his own, and that was the old money to his fear. There was always the money lenders banging at the door of the house. But I never let none of them get at the master. I kept the doors locked in their faces, I did. And I told them what they could do with their bills receivable. As God is my judge, mister, they would have pulled the sheets off the bed he was dying on if I don't let them so vicious they was about getting their monies. What the makes people get that way over money, do you suppose, mister? Well, what do you think, Mr. Zodic? Have they buried him yet? The master's house was what they called the Chulka Turin family house. Chulka Turin, mister? It's a name but nobody gets right. And him, poor soul, being the last of them aboard the name, who's to care now what the right and wrongs of sounding it to be? Now that Mr. Grubov has been talking the way we can expect some changes, wouldn't you say, Mr. Zoltis? I'd imagine Mr. Bendelewski would be the man to And uh, a hard thing it is to stay, family house, when all that was near and dear to poor Mr. Chokatorin, his mama and his papa were already gone and buried. <laughs> they were dead, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Tell about the rat. During the winter, I took service with the gentleman. I found the house overrun. That's as big as horse's head. Not only rats, mister, but the moles and other creature things but come burrowing into the cellar to get in from the snow. He wouldn't let me drive them out, but I couldn't easy enough without him knowing, because by that time, he was near finished with this world, but I didn't have the heart to go against his wishes, him being perishing like he was, and the doctor telling us to leave him be about the little things. Madam, I am not interested in rats, moles, and medical reports. And the lousy scream will upset. Of course, the fact that Mr. Kandelevsky accompanied Miss Grubov to the cemetery may not mean anything definite, Unless it's a step in the right direction. A young girl has to rely on someone when her father's dead, don't you think? Work! Please, on your own time. The boy is meaning a stream what belonged to the properties. When the master died, the water went particularly bad. It sank! That's what it did, and the garden had nothing to eat from it! It was a flower garden, you see, mister!
That's why it doesn't fit. It was supposed to go with him. So then... I want to the toy for what? For what?
Perhaps he has placed all of his punctuation on the last page. I'll look. <laughs> no, I do not see them. Perhaps he has stored them in the middle. I'll look in the middle. No, he has not placed them in the middle. So I will shake the pages and see if they fall out. It's just writing, mister. <laughs> there is no just writing. There is only proper and improper writing. Your Mr. Chul Kapoorin doesn't cross his T's. He ignores his T's. He makes his T's look like L's and the L's like B's and the B's like H's and the H's like nothing at all. And why doesn't he dot his eyes? Why doesn't he loop his E's? I will tell you why. Because he doesn't know anything. Because he doesn't land a desert, a void. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Read it. Take it home with you, Mr. Zorich. Read it. Well, I have to take it from you. I have to read it. I'll take it from you. I'll read it, and then I'll burn it. It's all I have, you know. It's up or it's down. We can't be keeping our feet on the same road. A young girl has to rely on.
will not take it home with me. I will not read it. worse for you if you believe that worms make distinctions on the ground. There are no distinctions on the ground. No, no better classes of worm, no gentleman's worm. No worm with an uncommon body, an uncommon mouth. You won't find them to your liking, I can assure you. And your insolences. <laughs> Here you come to me, down to me, and you satisfy me, or I'll ship you into oblivion. I'll take your bones and mangle them. I'll break your back! I'll... Why don't you shut your mouth, you sack of hot air? <gasps> oh, you scum. <laughs> you garbage! You drags, you horses tail. Do not think that injustice goes unpunished. Do not think that this is the office. Here, there is freedom! Here, you ask what you say to me. A trip to the cemetery does not make a love affair. Keep your hands off of my water jug. Oh! On the trip to the cemetery, it was boringly obvious which direction the affections of Miss Grubov lay. Spreading the blanket to cover our legs from the chill, I found that by a subtle, snaky motion of her torso, she connived so that one, two, three, our thighs and hips were dancing flank to flank to the rolling of the wheels. <sighs> Hand me the soul. Oh, yes. Who do you think you're ordering about? I am the head of the reader section, the first reader. You carbuncle, you wart, you pimple. <laughs> I do not take orders from you. I will dance on your grave before I am through. Hardly at this dance begun by a writhing of her arm, a heavy breathing of her bosom, as if the desire in her must burst. She seized my fingers one by one and locked them in the compass of her hand. <laughs> Get me the salt. Oh, yes. I'm warning you, Pandalevsky. Watch what you say. Do not push me too far. Be careful. I will not put up with these lies. Seizing thus my hand. She covered it with kisses <laughs> and sent it as it were on a foreign exploration to private lands best left undiscovered outside the marriage bed. I pretended bright surprise, but her importunities and protestations were of such to be a necessity, I at last gave way and exposed her bosom! Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Get me the soap. <laughs> You liar! Oh. You defend her! Oh. But why do you have to say such things? Uh, the soap. Oh, the soap, is it? I'll get yes. you the soap. Uh, uh. We'll see you about the rest to the cemetery. Oh, yes. We'll see you superior. I'll get your brains out. I'll drive you to the ground. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> Monstrous liar. Feel the fire. What right to say such things? What right to say such things? Once having seduced Miss Grubov, once having aroused in her the fevered breath of passion, which I found most sour to the smell, I suppose I have all rights to say what pleases me. Hand me the towel. It was then I thrust your name into the conversation. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, fell. Like a small stone drop from some low height into the sea. And what of Zorich, I said. And when there was no sign of recognition on the lady's lips, I pressed forward with encouragements to her remembrance. You are nevertheless welcome to the wedding along with the bookkeeper and the printer's apprentice. Hand me the towel. There will be no wedding. Oh, yes, a very large wedding. Hand me the towel. There will be no wedding. She is on Dutch. <laughs> I've washed my fingers, have I not? Do I wash my fingers for no reason? Hand me the towel. I will give you the towel! Ah, ah, you can ah, sleep with ah, the hell tonight! Ah, enough of your lies or insults! Ah, enough! Ah, enough! Ah, enough! Ah, enough! Call. Miss Grubo, I 
thought of you in the carriage. I did. I said, they will forget the extra blankets. And Miss Grubop will be gone. It's a long drive to any cemetery, and the horses move so slow. Yes, it was gone. That is too bad. In the winter, when death comes to Petersburg, he takes the large and the small. I have heard 40 to 50 cats. Their eyes are jelly as their whiskers stiff as Benjo wire die each night. I have heard, I have heard a like number of curved bitches with teeth so locked with rhyme they could not suck their puppies die each night. I have heard birds innumerable die each night seeking warmth in the chimney smoke. And I thought of you, huddled in the carriage, your father before you, his great black coat wrapped about him, his eyes shut to eternity come. And I said, she will listen to the horses kicking up the ice, and she will know in her heart that she is alone. I sat in the chapel with my father, and the cold sunlight shone along the length of his body, and I was alone. There was loneliness. I was alone. Oh. And what were you thinking of? I thought of nothing. I saw nothing. But without me, fire and the left sleep. I will set my desk in the main office, and I will be served here. And I will have what is mine to have. I will. I will buy a sailboat. I will buy a house. I will buy a carriage and go to the operas. Yes, you shall have all. Oh, I love you. Marry me. Oh, Marry. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. 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 You!
I would have been a captain by now. I, Nikolai Alexeyevich Chokotor, in my 29th year, certain in the hope of the resurrection and the life to come, begin this my diary at Lanswater, March the 20th, 1870. I had no one to speak for me. The doctor, the same doctor that brought me into this world, came to me this morning with his black bag of useless medicine to tell me that I must now prepare myself to be shortly ushered out of it. At the end of all of his medical subterfuges and hemline terminologies, he told me what the earth can do. I am to die. So be it. If my life has been as brief as it has been meaningless, the end is a goodness for all you know. I will leave this here for you, Nicolai. Here. You are told by Daniel to take a teaspoon. In any event, have a teaspoon before you retire. It will assure you a good night's sleep. It's opium. If you dream, do not pay any attention to it. And I lost my power to speak. I could not breathe. I felt myself suffocating in one person's stomach. I will have that hand here and yours open the window crack before you retire this evening. Well, there you are. Yet it's about time. What took you so long? I was chasing cats away. Away from Bach. There. Come here. Come here. There are some sheets here I want you to take up your grandmother to watch. Yes? Yes, and be quick about it. What's the matter with you? There's blood on them. Never mind, but Tante, let us take that to your grandmother to wash. Stupid lout. If your father were alive, he'd pick them both up by the neck and toss them out. I'll pick you up by the neck and toss you out. <laughs> Do you know what she was doing when I came in this morning? Sleeping. Big as you please, sprawled out in bed with a bottle of vodka clutched at her chest. And her legs dangling to the floor. She's allowed the downstairs to become a rat's den. I don't hear the soul that she drinks. But she see when I need her. The boy's somewhat backward. Every day he sticks his head in the room to see that I found my top in the trunk. He fancies my clothes. And the old woman? What does she fancy? The house. Look here, Nicolai. This is none of my affair, but if you do not watch what you are doing, they will rather take out of your head before they are done. Do not underestimate the cunning of the poor people, Nikolai. You do not know them. I have never known anybody that before. Do not worry, nothing is settled yet. We negotiate day by day. Besides, to whom else should these clothes in this house belong? By the time I am gone, she will run this roof over her head. And the summer house, what has become of that? Sold at auction. A cloth merchant from Novgorod, a man who had to have a summer house. This is all quite distressing to hear, Nikolai. Surely some other alternative has presented itself. No, doctor. Let the summer house be gone. But it meant to my father, it never meant to me. For it, the Chokotorin's father and son are at last quits of the human race. I've paid off the last of my father's obligations, and if no man would be the richer for the Chokotorin's heaven lived, well, no man can say he is poor either. Do not look so concerned, Dr. Corbin. Obligations must be met. Your friend will not permit this, Nikolai. To sell your property this way is demeaning. And you are no merchant, son. I have no friends, doctor. You have had friends, Nikolai. At the university, I'm sure you have made friends there. Every man has friends. Upon meeting my friends on the street of the university, why, it's Chukul Tola, they say. And when I approach, the circle of friends parts as if a slightly left by a string had been thrust into their midst. And the eyes which have been set upon my eyes begin dropping from my face to my chest to my knees to the bottom of my feet. 
And everybody stands absolutely stuck still, desperately trying to remember what it was they were saying before I arrived. Once I'm 10 feet past, the circle once again shrinks, the eyes once more rise, and conversation moves like fish hustling down in thought. Oh Christ, that the circus of this world might shrink and find me standing locked inside. Try not to have too many visitors, Nikolai. We must get your rest. Don't you worry about it. 
back there. Don't you worry. I'll find another place. March 22nd. Where you let mom came yesterday? <clears throat> As I signed the papers, giving the house of the terror tiana upon my death, I felt that by that simple signature I had somehow set myself irrevocably free. There's a piece of ice that has been bound all winter at last goes down to this sea. So I do a big on that. Low air. God knows. <laughs> I find myself hard put <laughs> to even describe the Kosh ride over. <clears throat> the driver was absolutely insensitive to anything other than meeting his schedule. So the four horses we had were good, and we were flying along. This madman insisted on adding a big horse. <laughs> this poor horse was completely out of place, completely superfluous. They are two Mr. Assorated. <laughs> How expected the poor beast to run naturally when his entire body was arched in pain? I don't know. Huh? And what was this lunatic's reaction when I informed him that we would do better without this superfluous horse? <sighs> oh. Uh, here as well, Mr. Chuckle Turpin. <laughs> he began lashing the horse a dozen additional strokes across his back and swollen belly and screaming out to the wind. <laughs> what the hell he's been tied on and if not to run, then what the hell for? <laughs> March 23rd, Sunday. Church bells have been ringing all morning. Heavy, slow, melodious. So they will ring when I'm no longer here to listen. I cannot bear to hear them. He had to shut the window tight, but still the sound washed into the empty room, filling every corner. In darkness, I see the meadow where once I played. The branches of my plum tree bending with fruit. The small stream where it got cut. Oh my Christ, if I cannot say goodbye to the summers, it warms me. In the winters I put my fur hat onto it, I cannot say goodbye, what shall I do? Who will have pity for us all? Pity? Why do you waste my time with pity? There is no <coughs> pity. Down the ladder, make up your mind to it. 
Do not live in the delusion that you will put tears in my eyes. In me, you do not deal with an amateur of suffering. Church bells have been ringing all morning. Let them ring. Every bell rings. Every dog cries. Every sheep bleeds tears. The public is not interested in suffering. In me, you deal with the public too, Kapoor. By the lungs and brains of you. That is what I am to decide. That is why I am a thirst reader. Not They call to all the others, and now only to me. Why am I the last? I will not forget that, Miss Feathers. No! Isn't it? Well, 
I will not play a different for the call. I will not pay. I ask for nothing that from nothing comes to nothing. I do not need these extravagances. The minister said nothing about money for the kerosene, sir. Tell Katharina Prolomnaya that I cannot afford extravagances. I live close to the dog. Have you not made me be 
thin or spasm uselessly to the coach of life? To whose benefit do I run? For whose benefit am I beaten? Oh my Christ, where is my post house? So it is a husband that she's after. She sends Miss Chimney sweep with the kerosene to keep me from getting an ice spray. Well, five feet four inches can hardly be considered short in any event. She does not wish me to be ice sprayed because she is concerned. The cold alone might be construed as meaning no more than a mere landlord-tenant relationship. So, if she just sent the cold, she might expect no more than a thank you. But more than a thank you is floating around here. The time I left my gloves on the whole table, and she called out to me on the street. Oh, Mr. Zolich, your gloves. And the payment of the rent, did she not say? Ah, oh, Mr. Zolich, your rent. What was the ah about? <laughs> ah, 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 Mr. Zolich. Ah's and O's have meaning. They just don't blow around the air. One does not say, ah, oh, just for the pleasure of opening their mouth. <laughs> Surely she loved me, even while her husband was still alive. April. Second, Wednesday. Wednesday, now. Call the soundless rain, falls into the skull, and vanishes. I struggle to separate the days one from the other. In years. And I know. As truly as I must have known all these years, that the new, and the new alone exists all I shall ever know of useless happiness and useless agony. Now I begin. Now, at the end of my life, I prove, dear God, that had I never lived, it would have made no difference to anyone. Some years ago, I was obliged to spend some months in a small town lying in one of the more remote districts, a town overrun by mother goats. Fortunately, the parents of Ilya Ajoli, an acquaintance I had known for a single term at the university, lived there. And before I found myself desperate with boredom, I resolved to pay a call. I sent a boy from the end of the boss deck to announce my arrival to the Ajoli.
Don't get rich with me, come. Take my advice, stay poor. When you live in poverty, you live in happiness. Your meals are served on time. Money is a curse. Lisa, go back into the kitchen, make a little snack to hold Mr. Bisminkov over to lunch. Oh, I can bake for lunch. There's no need to go to extra trouble. There is no need. Stop it yourself, my friend. Why be a martyr? If we have to wait for Mr. Chili Ch Ch Jul Katurin, we will have to wait. But there is no need starving yourself. We are not at the gates of starvation here. Bring <clears throat> some fish, Lisa. Clement. <laughs> Okay. 
something wrong? Oh no, there's nothing wrong. Except the message you said was the problem. You young used to talk so much about this university friend. We're expecting another one of his friends to call later this summer. You must know him. Captain Ivan Petrovich Narvinsky. Oh, I don't think so. Ilya used to talk about him all the time. He's the terribly handsome one. The one I was absolutely forbidden to meet. The one that went into the army. Oh, I'm afraid I don't recall. Shall I try to place you? Well, I don't think I've had a big room next to you. Isolation from mankind. I have now, for the first time, 
placed myself in contact with one whose steps would not plead for me, one whose eyes would behold my face and not turn away. It didn't matter that I stood in front of a fence cage and forced myself to whistle. Not even forced myself, I whistled joyfully! Oh, you ass! It was the tune whose melody I could no longer remember. It rose from my heart. A nameless tune from the so long shut closet that my heart flowed forth. And I brushed against the sleeve of her dress. And she did not move. And the bird broke forth and answering me. And I thought as I stood there, God, oh God, don't let me be shut up anymore. What are you talking about? What do you think you're talking? marching up and back. Have you lost your wits? I must talk to you. About what? Let me come in. I don't want to stand in the hallway. You are a man of words. 
Everybody knows uh, that. Everybody no. respects you for uh, that. Uh, Why just the other day my wife was commenting on your fine methods of address and speech deportment. How fine Mr. Zodich speaks. How quickly, how precisely. He is a master of the Russian language. Uh, you are much in respect because of it. If you came with me, the other tenants would follow. I know they won't. Come, come, we will face her together. You will say all the right things. You will say only what you know how to say. One, two, and three. It will be done. Leave go of my arm. I tell you, leave go. This is not for me. Leave me alone. What are you doing to me? We are neighbors. We live side by side. Side by side. And what is that? Side by side. When my mother died, who came to me with fruit? When I lay sick in my bed with a fever for three days? Who well, not that Michael? Who said to me, Zodich, my friend, we have come. Zodich. Are you alive? There is a soup to warm you, a, a, a cool towel for your head. Zodis, my friend, we have come. Nobody, nobody came! But nobody knew. Nobody was informed. Nobody came. They wonder then that Katarina Prolomnaya should reach for me. 
Is it every widow who can snatch place at the gold ring? Katerina for one minor, do not underestimate my value. I have no ring for your finger without considerations. You are not the voice of springtime. Bear in mind, marriage will be a diminishment for me without your assets. I do not mind the diminishment if there are assets. Rents. Movables. Tables, chairs, sofas, beds, etc. Drapes, linens, clothing, fires, equipment, carriages. Personal. The pleasures of the bed. Oh, Marred. Very streaks in the hair. Brow wrinkles. Throat wrinkles. Worn down teeth. Yellow and fallen out teeth. Breasts. Oh. <laughs> Good. A too full waist. A mouth forever at the food box. A brain stuffed. With candies, bear in mind, Katarina, that we do not live by bread alone. In me, you will not have one of those husbands who is fondly foolish. One of those husbands who thinks that to satisfy a woman's means is to satisfy all. In me, you will have a husband gentle but firm. A husband capable of great understanding and A husband who is capable of being the master of his house. A husband whose hand do not often sit down, sit down, becomes immovable. Monstrosities do not 
madness do not just create themselves. There are madmen at work here. It is only a matter of keeping to the path, my dear friend. It's all geometrically laid out, but has only to follow the path. You see? Look what these madmen have done to my wife. Here, Anna, come see on the bench. We will see what is geometrically laid out and what is not. Do they imagine we are bees? They do not imagine we are bees. Oh, oh, my head? My poor oh. arm. They think that because we are, are in an outlying province that they can send their madmen out here to create monstrosities. But this is a mistake. The businessmen of this town will not put up oh, with it. Oh, my hat? With the hat, Anna. I have a son in the diplomatic service. All I have to do is write a letter and there will be repercussions. It is in every family that has a son involved in the intricate workings of government or is expecting a visit from a captain in cavalry. The Department of Parks and the Diplomatic Service are totally separate. I think so, but you are mistaken. They are hand in glove. Look! Look at what has happened to my hat! Enough with the hat, Anna! It is only to a political novice such as yourself, Miss Minko, that things appear unrelated. In government, the toe is connected to the foot, the foot to the arm, and so forth. The Department of Parks is connected to the Department of Fish. It is not connected to the diplomatic service. It's only what they want you to think. Listen to me, Miss Minko. I am aware of what is and what is not. And there is Elisabetta. You were holding her hand when we left the fountain. I was not holding her hand when we left the fountain. Exasperate me, Anna. Lisa! There are things about government that I could tell you that would completely shock you. You would say, Kirill Matvievich, that is impossible. Kirill Matvievich, you are mad. Such things cannot be. She's lost. She is not lost. She is with Chulka Turin. Lisa! Lisa! Identity for good. 
Don't dally. Shall you be crowned or not? Fine, silky hair you have, Nikolai. Have there been any young ladies who have loved you for your fine, silky hair? Let us spend no one. Perhaps you have forgotten them. The woods are full of the size of young girls. I think there must be many young ladies who you have loved and have forgotten. Do not think of that, my mother. You must not still. You raise your head, the flowers will fall. Let us spend no one who has loved me. Do not think of it. <laughs> I think men must be very cruel creatures to play with the heart of a young girl and then not even remember her name. Men are like that according to my brother. Why do you laugh? Ilya says that the hearts of young girls are strewn about the world like grains of sand upon the shore. And that there are not as many stars in the night sky as unremembered girls. Do you think that is true? And is that not the same as true? What is your answer to that, Nikolai Alexeyevich? Who is the fine silky hair? You make you fun. Yes. Have I offended you? No. And what is the matter? Why are you staring in the sun? Must I have reason for everything? Is there not enough reason to stare at the sun? Because it is up there. Because it is flaming across the sky, because we will never see the light again, because, 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 because. Have I thought of enough because to satisfy you, Nikolai? Of a 
important the last words who will tell you that. Precisely just that. There is no other way for girls to come to love but through tears. Shall I tell you about my future plans? In my happiness, my love, I made future plans. The world was to become involved with me. And I, through Lisa, like some rose flung to the shores of the universe, was to become involved with the world. There was a plan involving a wedding. The little provincial town would never forget. The entire town was to be invited, down to the last shoemaker. Uh, you cannot make a wedding out of tears. There's nothing written down here to make weddings from. What are you making weddings from? <coughs> well, I should not be well with shoemakers sharing my happiness. I wanted everybody I'd ever brushed against to be happy. Let all those whose hearts were sick be healed. Let those who are pained in silence be pained no more. I saw the house of the Ajogans preparing for the feast. Tables stacked out. Linen cloths. Silverware. Bread. Steaming urns of soup. Caviar. Oh. Chickens boiled. Chickens roasted. Assortments of dainties. Teas black and green. Chocolate, meat, fruit, oranges, lots of oranges! Insane, insane madman! You're making a wedding out of nothing! Old man Ajovin stopped the news out of the chair. The light for wondrous old man Ajovin. Patting his stuffed belly, checking the time with a gold watch drawn from his vest, blowing fantastic fast clouds of smoke from a miraculous black cigar. My father's watch. I had given Father Rajogu my father's watch. And Mother Rajogu, crying tears on the voluminous breast. She was my mother now. I had a family, a Jogan. I reached that simple name sounded a Jogan. Has there ever been a more lovely name, a more beautiful sound upon the end? And Lisa, my Lisa before me in her wedding dress, her long, long brown hair falling to her shoulder. Her eyes lit with happiness. The happiness that would be mine forever. No more of this. Oh! In brass, leather, in sandals, of the captain of the cavalry call. Who is that? The friend of your yacht, Ivan Petrovich, a distinguished officer and rich, has organized the recruits for the yacht. Ilya's friend, that. What the hell does he want here? There's nothing Ilya has at home. What does everyone want here? Oh.
since I was in the facility, I would come over. I hope I'm not intruding. Not a bit. Are you sure? Yes, it's quite all right. Because if you wish I could return later, do not wish to interrupt. You are not interrupting. May I present Captain Ivan Petrovich Narditsky, an officer in the South Cavalry. Captain, this is Nikolai Alexeyevich Chili Chulkatorin, a friend of Ilya's from the university. Ah! Oh. Okay. A pleasure! <laughs> Sir. Thank you. Thank you. A pleasure for me as well. Well, please go on with whatever, whatever you were discussing. I'll just sit here. Oh, no! Please. Oh, no, please. This is quite all right. I really what, don't mind. Is this our list. last chair? I have a thousand chairs in this house. Please, there's no need to bother. There is a need. No one has to sit on floors in my living room. So, you know Ilya from the university? Yes, from the university. Ah. Uh, is that for you, Ilya Tom? Yes. Ah. Uh, perhaps we've met before. I don't think so. Ah. Uh, are you one of the gentlemen Ilya brought to my father's son? No. no. It was a hunting trip. I don't hunt. Oh. The captain is here to recruit soldiers for the Zav's cavalry. So? Yes. Almost noon. <laughs> Let me help you, Mr. Ashogun. I'll give you a hand. Your pathways, your chateau glades. I give you back 
her whose dear sweet lips once crossed my heart. I give you back the earth I built upon to take a crown. I give you back the happiness of days now fled from me. I give back. No, no, no. I bet you just came in for dinner. Everybody does. What? I said, isn't it strange? We've never met previously. I just bet you came in for the dance. Everybody does. Came in where? Like in the house. No, no, I've been here for months. Isn't it strange? We've never met before. Yes, yeah, strange, very strange. Just everybody is here tonight. Everybody. Look what I think somebody is going to talk to the couch. Everybody is here to be having such a gay time. I just love dancing. I can't seem to remember who I am when I'm dancing. Isn't that funny? I start dancing, Tanya, you must remember your own name, you silly girl. You must forget your own name. And then I hear myself say, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the room begins spinning around and around, and the music seems to slide right into my slippers. So many of the gentlemen I know are absent tonight. Did he say something to me? Did you hear him say something to me when the dance bar? The captain? Yes, yes, him. I am sure I don't know Mr. Chocobor. I don't think so. Isn't he a handsome man in that lovely uniform? He made a noise. There's something wrong, Mr. Chocobor. No, why should there be something wrong? I don't know. Then what are you talking about? Let's dance. <laughs> you provincials. You. <laughs> Perhaps tomorrow I'll give them less cause for latter than they think. 
Have you ever fired a pistol? No. Then you are a fool. He will kill you. He will not miss. Perhaps. Not perhaps, certainly. <laughs> do you wish to die? Is that it? I do not wish to die. Oh, do not be too sure, my young friend. Many a man has died thinking he did not wish to die. Listen to me. Go away tonight. There's nothing for you here. You cannot make a woman love you, not if you stood on your head till kingdom come. If you can learn that by the time you are 25, you have learned much. You do not understand. Then tell me. Tell me what it is I am to understand. Because I am glad it is not for love that you are putting your back to the wall. Because I am very glad you are not dying for love. Because at this very moment, Captain's affair is progressing. The back of the Ashokan guard in a close carriage in the captain's bedroom. Or wherever else they have found the field. Why do you lie to me? Yes. 
You may each take five paces. At the command turn, you will turn and fire. But has anyone found out where we're supposed to ship this poor fellow's body? <laughs> Got your pistols? Take your paces! One, two, three, four, five! Turn! Stand your place, sir! Me! Shoot me! Shoot! Shoot! Where is he going? Take your hands off me! Leave me alone! Come back! Shoot! Shoot me! There is nobody! Nobody wants to shoot you! Listen! You don't know what that little scar across this gun will do to me. Nobody in town spoke to me again. They wouldn't let me come in the doors because I'm the one who the killing to try to kill a captain. She wouldn't see me. What right did he have to fire into the air? What right did he have to score me so? What right to injure me twice? Help me get him to lie down, Lieutenant Yemna. Did that deserve that reason? What right did he have to fire into the air? What does that supposed to do? Make his insults lie down? Those snakes fighting but they cuss at them! Even snakes. Just because I'm too powerful is someone to be stepped on? Where was he going? Why is he dressed, Hannah Tiepa? I don't know, sir. He said he was going to a dance. Take off his boots. What nonsense. So who is right after all? After they didn't speak to me? After all, the door shut? After I wandered the street like a ghost for weeks. So who was right after all? When they came around to me? Choke the him! And they knew my name! You were right. Listen, my friend. He has made her pregnant and has deserted her. He's moved out with his recruits. What is to be done? Eh? You know how it is with those springtime fellows. One flower in April, one flower in May. His day, his hour is my whole summer. My whole life! Then do not trifle with 
me. Are you going to be master of this house, Mr. Lodis? Hey. Are you to be the new master, sir? What have you heard? Nothing, sir. Oh, no, you heard something. Oh, 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 do not play games. She mentioned my name. Oh, yes, Mr. Lodis, don't you? Oh. In what connection? In connection with the weather, sir. She said this morning that you left the house without your scarf. Thus? <laughs> <laughs> or are there any oohs or ahs? Something of that, sir. And ooh, ah. Ooh. <laughs> ah. Go. Go. Tell your mistress that I will be down shortly. Wait. Just say I will be down. Do not say shortly. Shortly implies haste. Here there is no haste. A wormy apple is neither to be thrown out nor hasten to. Gray, but neither too holy nor too funereal. Gray, gray as a sea. Of my welfare. 
One who might be so concerned to see to it, as it were. The proper socks laid out in the morning. The stove lit 15 minutes before awakening. Mm. Oh. The wash basin filled with water, neither too hot nor too cold, as it were, etc., etc., etc. In brief, one who might so conform her life to mine that we become a single entity of one mind, of one direction. <laughs> I, on the other hand, shall, as it were, cease the helm of our mutual. There's no need to bring up such superfluous topics. We must proceed logically. The disorganized mind is the handmaiden of now, my bill of assets, what you may expect in terms of physical properties. <laughs> Three pairs of shoes, two in excellent condition, one in used condition, though without holes. Seven pairs of black socks. The wash, therefore, must be done no later than the sixth day of the week. There is no need to inspect these socks at this time. Everything is as I will stay. Three suits, one black, one brown, one gray. Eighteen pieces of undergarments. In undergarments, I am particularly fortunate, having received twelve pieces in total settlement of my late cousin's estate. Five shirts, four cotton white, one Egyptian cotton striped. A wool overcoat, full cotton, with imitation pearl buttons. A Malacca cane, left to me by the estate of my late father, still in the process of settlement, but to which I I have an indisputable right. A Persian lock, nine by twelve, purchased for me by my mother in Constantinople. Bedding supplies, consisting of two sheets, two pillowcases, one pillow, and a six-inch stick. Full down Siberian comforter. <laughs> and your heart, Major? Uh, uh, a bank statement, listing monetary assets in excess of. 117 oh. rubles. Oh, your heart, Mitya, what of your heart? What are you talking about here? I don't oh. know. But I must have love, love, love. Well, there is no room for love in the itemizing of particulars. Now, where is your list of physical properties? Oh, here is my physical property. Feel it beating. <sighs> Show me your list of bank holdings, your movables. You're tangible and intangible. Oh, my dog, Mitya. What of my dogs? Superfluous. Do we got them rid of? I am not piloting a doghouse. Oh, be my pilot. Oh, mine. What are you doing? Stop them. I don't want any fuss. Oh, we got them in the house. We are staying in the bedroom. There'll be no need for you to work. No need to leave the house. We're already done. <laughs> Soon winter will be down upon us. 
You are well? Yes, good. Cool. And you are Madame Ashogana? Well. And Lisa? How quickly the summer has gone. How quickly youth vanishes. Smoke. That is all it is, my dear true Katurin. Smoke and expectations. This is a different household you have come into. You mustn't blame yourself. But they blame me? All of them. Honor the servants. You see what ingratitude is? Could I tell what the snake he was when he came into this house? Is it every snake that walks around and says he's a snake? to save my Lisa from him, and only received contempt in return. What can we say? Your friendship now is all I desire. You have it, my friend, from the bottom of my heart. And to bring Lisa happiness. If that were only possible. If I could believe you could find forgiveness for her. It is possible. I do forgive. What irony. Bitter, bitter iron. The whole town condemns her. And you, who have every right. I do not care what fools condemn. You understand? She is not a blessed body to me because of fools. She is a young girl. She made a mistake. The judgment of the youth is not foolproof. Yes. As you say, she will have me. Even now, I will marry her. I will take you to Lambswater, and she will be loved as no woman has been loved. She will be respected, I swear that to you. Respect? Is that yet possible? Believe what I say, my friend. If you believe nothing else of me, believe that. Let the past be done. You have her. Oh, she is alone in the garden. Go! Go, my son, quickly. Do not catch cold. Together, they 
may die. This is the holy light of marriage. Now we must ask what is marriage. Marriage is a sacrament. And by a sacrament, the church means a sanctity and the union of spirits. Therefore, marriage is not based on the theory of your possessions. Oh no, Katharina Tolomaya. It is not based on the assets and liabilities. The church does not ask us to, to inquire into the number of houses owned, the number of horses in the stable. Love is above these things. It makes harmony from separateness. It makes joy. It is above rings and rubles. It is the light that moves over the darkness of the sea. It is the star at the moon. It is the refuge. It is the shelter. It is the roof against the wind that even now illuminates with respectful fondness. Now that you have been advanced in your position, you will give it two extra rubles a month for the gold and the oil. Uh. To you, Katharina from Longmaya, to you I offer this hand of marriage, this hand of spiritual bondage, this hand. I cannot marry you, for you're too old and too short. <laughs>
You are an angel. What should I have ever done without you? Is there nothing that for children? There is no other ending. 